Okay, today I'm doing my review of the Lost Puddle Jumper Original. This model came out in 2015 and has been a popular board ever since uh, for low end grovelling and a board that can perform well in chest to head high waves. I would say it can perform bigger than that, but if you're going to seriously surf bigger than that, you're going to be looking at other boards. <coughs> it's a full nose, quite a large tail to it. This particular board was lent to me by a good friend of mine called Delmi, uh, so I could do this review today. I've uh, been talking a lot about pole jumpers, so I thought I'd give you my take on it myself. I've surfed this board as a quad and a thruster, and it works and holds very well and is competent as a thruster. But for me, I would definitely go quad on it, especially with it being a grobler. It's best as a quad. I've got a straight edge here to look through the curves at the bottom of the board, what we see going through. So starting in the nose, quite flat going through the nose, going into a single concave now. Single concave, quite a deep single concave. Coming into the fins now, I can see a slight double in the beginning of the fins just here. Double, double, and starting to feel that V just on the start of the thruster box here. Get some V. Rocking all the way to the back, plenty of V in the tail. The reason for that V tail is so it can rock either side. So when you Going along the wave, it's going to let you do that, that, back and forward much easier than if it's flat or a single cave, concave all the way through the back. As you can see to my right here, I have my go-to, one of my favourite boards ever, the baked potato. Now in the last review, we did a lot of comparing the sweet potato to the baked potato. So just to make it fair and interesting, I thought we're going to do a a comparison between the the baked potato and sweet potato in a minute. I'll just uh, tell you how it felt as it, as it rode. It catches fairly easily. Uh, this model is a 510 at roughly 41 litres in volume and it worked really well. It gets in waves pretty early and carbon wrap technology works really well, it's really poppy uh, very impressed with the technology, this board's a couple of years old now and the deck is holding up pretty well, you can see there's a few repairs here and there but overall it's holding up pretty well so uh, what we'll do next, we'll dive straight in and compare the two boards, rockers, one on top of the other okay, so this is now the two boards on top of each other and as you can see now the complete opposite to the baked potato to the sweet potato. This time we have the pole jumper on top of the baked potato. Quite a bit of rocker compared I would say. And a good, you're shaving off a good two inches either side of the tail with the pole jumper compared to the baked potato. But the baked potato is a 6-1 and this is a 5-10. So, if I was to put a 6-1 puddle jumper on top of the 6-1 baked potato, the tail would be roughly an inch wider, so that would take that, that difference to one inch. The difference being with the baked potato, it has a diamond tail, now that shorters your rail line at the back of the board, so making the board essentially feel more like a 6-0 than a 6-1, because it's cutting down that rail line in the back of the board. The nose, I would say they're almost identical width wise, very very close. So in a 510 it's got that much nose area, in a 510 compared to 61 baked potato it's needless to say you can put more weight up on this nose and catch the waves a little bit earlier. Um, for me catching on both these boards I would say the catching ability was fairly equal. I have surfed a 5 length baked potato which is obviously closer to this size pearl jumper and 
My, my personal pull jumper that I owned was a 510. So I know exactly how, how it rides and everything like that. It's got quite a full rail, but not as full as, say, the baked potato. But the baked potato tends to hold the volume and drop it like this, whereas the pole jumper feels it has it more evened out to the rails and just curves in quite nicely. So um, a good groveling option. Uh, the difference between the PU and the carbon rat, I don't think, I didn't feel that much difference if I'm honest. Um, I just felt this had a little bit more pop if you hit a little section over the PU, but the PU worked very well being a groveler, cutting through all the chop and bump where you need a little bit more weight in the board to cut through that which is always a good thing if you're looking at um, small wave performance but it depends who you speak to and how they look at it and how they think and feel about the boards. But overall it's a really really nice board, a really good go to groveler, not that you're going to need too much groveling now we're coming out of summer and we're in autumn time. There you go, so now you have good profile of how they look side by side. Bit of the nose there, it's a bit of a tricky manoeuvre this one. And the tails. So, put that one down for a second. So I always give you a good look at the bottom contours as best I can. So here we go, we'll try our best. See how well we can see those contours. I've put it under the main light here so you can try and see that. See that single concave going into the double into the V out the tail. So, <coughs> good little option for when the waves drop down, a bit like today, about two to three foot and nice and clean, light. But, um, yeah, so that was my take on the pole jumper. There we go. Well done.